So thank you, Arjen, for this great introduction. As you can see, we're going to go back, take you back to the future of so software development today. Um, well, yeah, I would say this slide, we are riding along of the way for back to the future to success, so uh, there should be enough this slide. Um, I'm Jelle Klaver from Cetus. Uh, what we do at Cetus is we help organizations uh, gain leading insight into customer experience. Maybe you've seen this one here. You've seen it downstairs. Maybe you've seen it before. Uh, this is one of the ways we collect uh, feedback from customers, uh, but it's also th uh, through so conducting surveys, but it's also through sensors and measuring in other ways uh, on physical locations, how people experience uh, things and how the organizations can actually improve upon this experience. Um, yeah, I think that's basically me. Yeah. On to uh, Sven. My name is Sven Vintges. Vintges, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm CTO at Stax, um, and Stax uh, has been founded by Berko and Sietje, as you may, uh, may already know. Um, and it's founded to make uh, it easier to build better software. So that's our mission, that's our vision. Um, and we aim to do that by developing a methodology and a platform to support the way we, uh, we design and build, uh, build software systems. And that's what we're going to show you Today, the platform, as well as a customer case, how we're implementing the, the processes and the platform together with, uh, with our sister company, uh, Cetis. Um, why the love? Like I said, we're a sister company. Um, but Cetis has also been founded on the principal idea of thinking from your business processes and building your system all the way from the business processes and making the software run basically from mainly the business perspective. And that's also the vision we have at Stacks. You should so start at the business and the business processes. So that was a really easy uh, um, a relationship uh, to build. And yeah, today we're going to show you how that works in terms of our products and services. And uh, the platform set is, uh, has been developing to measure customer satisfaction. Um, this talk is not about AI. Sorry about that. Uh, back to the future of software development. You probably were expecting some AI. Yeah, there will be some AI in, in this talk, but it's not about AI. AI, we see it as a piece of the puzzle. You can apply it in your automation of your business processes or automating your business, um, but it's just another tool in our tool belt to build better software for the, for the world to see. Um, so what's it about then? It's about a pro-code biz DevOps solution to building information systems, buzzword bingo achieved today. Um, and basically what we're saying here, there's a lot of um, tools in, in, in um, our profession aiming at low code, for example, uh, aiming at designing for the business. We're not about that. We're also a fond believer of you need to write code. So it's a pro code approach, um, but involving the business more in the whole chain of developing, uh, developing the software for building your information systems. So what we're basically trying to achieve is we're trying to add the biz to DevOps. And um, how we do that, you probably all know GitHub, GitLab, and stuff like that, which is mainly focused at um, the dev part of our the processes we use to build software and the operational part. So you can maintain, of course, your code, your merge request, your continuous delivery, um, deploy on your cloud environment, etc. It's all very developer focused. It's technically focused. It's good stuff for us. It helped us a lot in, in getting better in developing software, make it more faster, go faster to the market. But it doesn't help us build the right software, right? So you can write all this code and it can go to production very fast. But if it's not the code you need to write for the business, then you're not building the correct software system. And that's one of the main problems we're seeing. So I've been in uh, IT for 23 years now, um, and a lot of the guys in the company has, have been in IT for a long time. And the main problem we're facing in developing and designing software systems is it not aligning with the goals of the business, basically. So it's not really doing the business. We're focusing at, oh, we should cub use Kubernetes, or we should use Python, or we should use uh, C Sharp, or whatever tools and technologies there are. But then they're not really solving this business problem. So. Um, that's the reason why adding the BIS to DevOps and our platform basically is um, also based on Git. So everything we're doing is stored in a Git backend. So it makes it easier for developers to pick it up and build code from it. But we're adding the whole perspective of the business integrated in the platform. So you're not only seeing the code, but you're also seeing what's this business about? What's the strategy? What's the, what are the processes? What are the parts of the business involved in the system? I'll show that a little bit more when I dive into our uh, product. Um, my stacks. Um, the main part of developing for the business is that you need to communicate effectively, right? So if we're talking Python or we're talking in our language, 
the business, business doesn't understand us. Also, if the business is talking in their specific domain expertise and we're not involved in that process, we don't understand them. So we have like these two, uh, this big gap to, 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 to bridge, right? And that's where most of the problems exist in systems we build today from our perspective. Um, Eric Evans, um, one of the great thinkers, I believe, of recent years with his domain-driven design approach, also emphasizes uh, a lot. So you have to speak the same language and you have to be agree on the language and the decisions you make designing and building the system. Um, but he was not the first, uh, probably Jordan wasn't even the first, but in, in 79 he developed this way of structuring, structurizing the analysis of software systems. So at that time we were mainly programming, he was thinking about, okay, how can we structurize the whole process? Um, today it may seem like a bit of a waterfall approach and all debate with Agile, but basically what he said, you should first do a feasibility study, then make a, grand a high level design and then uh, an implementation of design, which should not take months, but could take a short period. But he was emphasizing, you should think about your data, about your processes, all the things the business is involved with. And somehow um, during a period of our uh, profession, fast growing, we lost a little bit of that, that thought. So it's old ideas, but we put it into new technology. We're applying recent technology in uh, applying the thoughts of, in this particular case, Mr. Jordan. So what we have built at, uh, together with, with CETIS is basically it's a very, very high level architectural uh, uh, yeah, picture, I'd say. So we've built MyStacks. MyStacks is our collaboration platform. You use it to design your digital business. Um, We've uh, also implemented specs. It's a runtime environment so that you can directly execute your business processes and there's a lot more involved, but we'll spe specifically dive into business processes today. And it's integrating with the CETES architecture and services. So once we change the process, and we're going to show that today, um, it will behave differently in the specific application of CETES. So these are the three main components uh, we'll be talking about today. So demo time. What an introduction. Oh, yeah. too fast. Shall I give you the mic and then? Oh no, yeah, you. I'm going to. Oh, you you start the demo. Yeah, you start here. So, going to lay it down. Oh no! Oh no! It's, it's going to fall. Ooh, I think the top level is just a little bit uh, falling off the screen. Um, so I've talked about the uh, the BIS, the Dev, and the Ops phase. Uh, this is our MyStacks platform. It's the product we're investing in, we're developing at the moment, and you can see also see these three different phases. Hey, you have the BIS uh, phase, the Dev phase, and the Ops phase. Uh, we're focusing at developing the BIS phase. Like I said, we see that there's a big gap there. And we're also integrating development environments, so GitLab, GitHub, stuff like that, and your operational perspective as well. Those are on, uh, on our roadmaps. All the information that's in here is stored in the Git backend. So we're using in the backend. So if we want to get rid of stacks, then we can just leave and get our you stuff from Git. Yeah, <laughs> you can just get your stuff from Git, clone the Git repository, and all your stuff is there. Uh, this is just a convenience user interface, I'd say. But the user interface really sh helps you in thinking about your business. And we're applying this in all our projects and it's also helping us to have a discussion with uh, the customer about uh, what's your business about. So in this case, we've set up CETIS um, and uh, I've put in some generic uh, domains, but the domains are basically the parts of your digital business. So all these components are working together to uh, achieve your business strategy and your business goal. So you describe here in business terms like finance, I have human resources, I have sales. Um, and for example, finance, this, um, and it's uh, of course for demo purposes, you describe your domain model, uh, the language you speak with your, uh, um, hey, your domain experts. As you can see, this is all business language. And you can have a little description no AI involved in this case. It's, uh, I've written it, everything. Oh, wait, there's this little robot in here, which we can ask anything. And this will generate texts like this. So if you need inspiration for your business, for your domain, you can ask anything to our little doc, the hence the back to the future presentation. This is doc, this is our assist, assistant. And there's, of course, yeah, uh, most of you are aware of it, a GPT backed uh, model behind it, which helps you like design domains, uh, or text for your domains. So this finance domain, we can dive a little bit deeper into it. It's, it has different products. So these are the products or the services it provides either externally to other organizations or internally. So budgeting, uh, financial planning, financial reporting and invoice management. And from there, these products, they are all being uh, delivered via business processes, right? So uh, what we're doing here is 
we have this uh, business process. I left it very simple, which the business also can read. This is BPMN for the people know about it. It's an open standard. You can use it in multiple process engines to, and we'll show that today to ex directly execute it. This platform is also a collaboration platform. So the business is involved in this platform as well. You can make the discussions, have discussions with the business. You can also register the decisions you make with, together with the business. And in the end, you will write these uh, business processes together with the domain model and your business rules. You can have it, for example, uh, stuff like uh, decision modeling notation or uh, a Gherkin for your acceptance criteria, stuff like that. I'm not going to dive into that today, mainly focus on the business processes. Um, and here we, we've designed a little process. Um, if you see this icon, means it is being an automated process, and this icon means it's a user process. So this platform, with which we're working together with uh, Cetis, uh, and also our other customers really designs the business and therefore makes the specifications for the application to be developed. But it can more than do more than that. We can also deploy these processes to the running application and change it on the fly together with the business. So you can have like this real uh, early feedback and a fast fee feedback on the system you're developing. But in here, yes, I've noticed a customer satisfaction domain. Ooh. I think you know a little bit more about yeah, that. Shall yeah, I, shall I take over from you? Shall I hand over? The mic, and I'll try to uh, to make myself sound clear over here. So um, to be clear, once again, this is the platform you're seeing right now is MyStacks, and as said, this we're as a customer of MyStacks, and we use the platform to design our business in. So we have a customer satisfaction uh, domain here, um, and what you can see is that there's also a product called Pygrun. And if you want to know more, a little bit more about domains, products, and processes, and how that sits, I think Sven is going to do another talk today about clean architecture. Uh, it also mentions this a bit more, so we won't go too much into depth in why we uh, uh, set it up like this. But there's a great pro uh, process in here which we measure satisfaction at Pygrun. And I think you all know what it's about. Uh, so today we're at Pygrun. Uh, and as uh, I just explained, as we at Cetis, we are uh, collecting customer uh, experience uh, information and insights. Uh, but we also want to do that in a more um, innovative way. So one of the things we are doing is trying to find other ways to measure how people uh, experience things. And what we did for today, we created a process, as you can see here, and I'm going to walk you through it. Uh, and we're actually going to uh, run and execute this process. Um, so um, we have step one is uploading a photo. We're going to count how many of you have raised their hands. So be prepared, you have to raise your hands uh, in a few minutes, if you like it over here. <laughs> and then afterwards, we're gonna upload some audio um, and we're gonna calculate how loud you all are. Um, and then, uh, well, the process is finished. So let's try. I mean, let's see what's gonna happen. So uh, l apart from um, the design uh, view we have been uh, seeing right now, there's also an operations view. So you can see the current st uh, status of processes. So this is currently a process uh, the process in our system, so it's deployed from my stacks to uh, set its own architecture, and that's where uh, the specs engine, as uh, Sven uh, mentioned, comes in. Comes in. Yeah. And maybe to add to that, this this will also be a part of my stacks. It's now in a different screen, but if you are in my stacks, I've shown you the design time version uh, as well as Yella. Um, and this runtime version will also be a flip in the MyStack system. So you have like all the context of which domain, which product am I looking at, which process. So you're also seeing the business context of where's this process running, basically. Yes. Well, and some of you might have thought, why does he have his phone in his pocket? It's a bad idea during a presentation. I'm even picking it up now because we're going to show you this process and I have to start it from my phone since how can I also take a picture? And now I should be sharing my phone screen. And of course, it's demo time. <laughs> so it's waiting to share my screen. Let's try once more. One. Oh, yeah, there we are. So yeah, I didn't uh, do this screen sharing myself. It's just, uh, <laughs> but it's about the process. As you can see, there's a great uh, Pygrun Py logo. Uh, and there's a button, satisfy me, and with the button satisfy me in this case, we can start this process. So if I press the button over here, then you can see it starts loading up uh, our first task to do. We have to upload a photo. Now I'll go back to the previous view here, which is the ops view, and you can see here there's one process actually running uh, at upload photo. It's a user task, as Sven already explained, uh, and I'm the user currently. So let me share my phone screen again. Gus, get ready. I want to... Uh, I want, 
I hope it works now. <laughs> it's the last time I'm, I'm maybe switching. Maybe sing again. Yeah, maybe dance. Do a little dance. It's, uh, it's the last time I'm going to switch to my phone again, so uh, I'll just try and wait it out. Let's see uh, what happens. In the meantime, uh, I can tell you something more. Ah, yeah. okay. I start start uh, telling some things. So and I want to ask you all to, um, if you like this demo up until now, oh, that's me, <laughs> to, uh, to raise your hands if you want to. Woohoo! Hey. Great. So do you all like this picture? Do you all like this picture? I think so. So uh, we're going to use this photo, and we're going to see we haven't tried it with a crowd this big. Uh, but now I'm going to save this, and that means that I'm going to upload the picture and complete this step. And if I'm quickly back into this view, then you can see that now it's at count raised hands, which is uh, a service within the status platform as well, which um, uh, uses an AI to determine the amount of people that raised their hands within the photo. Um, so you can actually see it running. It takes some time since AIs are really fast and sometimes they're slow. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to refresh again. And you can see that now it's moved on to the next step. And what I can show you in our own uh, platform over here is that we have uh, collected some uh, feedback already. But also, oh, well, <laughs> as you can see, it's demo time as well. We have uh, zero people who raised their hands. So I think that's uh, maybe a little bit too small. So. <laughs> We've tested with, with smaller crowds and it worked, but... Uh, it's infinite. Oh, yeah, it's infinity. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so you have seen that the next step is uh, uploading audio, but as you saw, you've also seen is that I have an iPhone, and iPhones uh, don't allow you to record and upload audio, so I'm going to fake this one. But what I'm going to show you is that I can move to my uh, laptop, open the same link I just copied from my phone, and... Uh, load the same process up again. So now I'm going to continue this process from my laptop, upload an audio file, save it, and then again, if we're fast enough, because this one, oh, this one is really fast, so you've been quite loud. <laughs> Thanks for cheering. <laughs> so <laughs> we have to inform the police, the crowd goes wild. Ah, yeah, okay, so there's our next uh, user task. So we have to call the police right now. Um, but the next thing I want to show you is, indeed, this is just a process running in a system. Well, it's, of course, all clear to you how this works. But what we're going to do is we're going to modify the process, redeploy it, and then run the modified version. And now this is where the scary thing is going uh, to happen, because it's a demo, and it's, of course, always going to be a thing. So let's uh, take this process and make a really simple modification. We're going to go for the first um, uh, task, and we're going to get a, at a timer event. I have to find it always, and then after the timer event, we're gonna add a task, which, well, uh, too late. Now we need a DeLorean, and I think you all know why. Because we go back to the future, or shouldn't I have said it? So now we have to fill in the timer, which is a little bit of a hassle for now, and then we do. Uh, oh, I'm not. Ah. Ooh, I think it's set, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. So now. Oh, yeah. I should make it a user task as well since now nothing actually happens. Uh, so make it a user task. Now save it. Well, back to the future edit. Something like that. I don't know. Now the system also keeps track of all the history of the, the processes. So if you have like, are you in a highly regulated environment, you need to see the difference between two processes. It keeps complete track. Um, we also have, a, but we're not going to show the difference, uh, uh, difference view, so you can see the difference of processes. So you can also uh, discuss with the, uh, the, the, the business stakeholders, hey, this has been changed. But also uh, see differences between your design process and your runtime process, because it's also the same software running in the, process engine, so then you can also uh, uh, prove you're compliant or the changes are ready to de be developed, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, so now the scary thing is going to happen. Let's deploy the new process. I know there's, uh, no, there's, there's no error message. If there's an error, there's no success message right now if there's success. So we'll have to check over here, move to the site, and you can see we're on version 17 now. We haven't tried this demo before. Um, uh, and I should refresh since, uh, and then if you see that version, 18, so wow, woohoo, great success, phew. Um, yeah, 
So um, right now you can see the process has obviously changed. There's a timer here. Uh, I already explained to you. And what I'm going to do right now is now this time let's start the process uh, from my laptop since sharing my phone takes a while. Um, so let's try again. Let's satisfy me. Now it says upload photo. Uh, but if I go back here, then you see it's an upload photo and it should take three seconds exactly. So if I refresh again, then you see, oh no, we're too late. So now we should get build a DeLorean. So <laughs> let's uh, go back to the future, people. <laughs> One thing I completely forgot about, I think you know what I'm going to mention, is of course, we need also need a little bit of code. <laughs> we're at the Python conference, of course. Um, so how does this actually work? Um, so um, we have this process running in the engine. Uh, and so the process is actually executable, but you need to handle these tasks. So there needs to be something handling it, of course. And this is basically, I'm just going to show you this layout. And you can uh, see it over here. We have service tasks. That's our, those are the tasks that are automated by the, uh, by the system, also within the process. Um, you can see that it measures satisfaction, count raised hands uh, on the top there. Uh, you have the pointer? Or? Oh, it's over here. Oh, I think you already found it uh, without me pointing out. Um, and you have the second task here, which is calculating decibel. I'm not going to show you how they're actually executed since that's regular Python code uh, with some, uh, some uh, magic in there. But um, this is basically the layout. So this is the way you connect your own code to actual the business steps within the BPMM process we're running. Phew. The demo going <laughs> without <laughs> errors. <laughs> So this is also the pro code part. So it's not about low code and just designing processes and screens and uh, have it all automatically deployed and, and work because we've experienced that you always need like a little bit more code to make it work. First prototypes, low code works. Um, but as soon as you hit like more complicated business uh, uh, requirements, integration requirements, you need often need a bit more. You need a bit more power under the hood and that's where Python comes in. So. Um, but the boilerplate code is very easy. Just add the decorator, and as soon as the process hits that stage, you can run your code. You can do anything you like. You can call processes, do calculations, uh, yeah, uh, access databases, uh, scream and shout, whatever you want to do, you can just put it in there. So it's very extensible and also very easily integratable in your current uh, uh, architecture, as we've shown uh, with, with Cetus uh, most recently. Um, Some key takeaways from our perspective in terms of what do you need if you want to build better software. Like I said, we're using this in all our projects internally, this, this way of thinking, this platform, we, we're building it, uh, eating our own dog food, using it on the go. Um, basically, it comes down to aligning your business in IT. And that's often discussions about hours spent um, within larger organizations, from my experience. But it should be about your business strategy, your business processes. And that's really what we're aiming at with our, our software, uh, and this way making it easier to build better software. Um, yeah, there has been a lot of thinking about how we should design software, right? It's from the 60s, uh, um, where was this legendary demo about how software systems uh, should work, the mother of all demos. If you haven't seen it, Google it, look it up. It's really awesome, it's ins actually insane what they were thinking about in the 60s, about internet, communication, user experience. Um, so we're standing on the shoulders of giants, but using new technology, using the new stuff about how can we collaborate, work together, um, and try to catch this in this product and use it in, uh, in, in real life projects and systems. Skills from startups, we're using it with Cetus, which is uh, no, that's not really a startup anymore. It's been quite, it's been there for years, but also new projects or bigger organizations uh, as well, so it scales well. Um, and it's basically about bridging the design, uh, the communication gap um, uh, between the domain experts and the developers, but also bridging the design and runtime gap. So we've shown you the design is really also what you're using at the runtime environment and uh, the other way around. So if you have like your runtime process, you can also show it in the design what the business understands. So there are domains like I'm in finance, I'm in invoice management, oh, how many invoice processes are there running? And they'll have this blue uh, little uh, circle in their process and they can see, oh, I have like 50 invoices waiting to be approved. So they can also really operate their business with this view. So it's really trying, uh, we're trying to bring business and IT very close together from a collaboration language model as well as a design and runtime 
uh, system. So these are the key takeaways and hence the name Back to the Future. It's been old ideas and new tech, so trying to get back to the future again. That's what it's all about. Thanks. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, uh, Jelle and Sven. Uh, I think a really clear talk. Uh, also really nice, uh, he, sh he showed the BPMM processes which allow for detailed uh, business uh, process overviews which you cannot really get into code, uh, but it's clear to communicate to business, so I think it's really nice. Um, are there any questions from the audience? Yes, you sir. We yeah, I, yeah, I, I did not understand it quite uh, well. The good uh, question was if you um, have the, uh, you can connect your own code to the service tasks, but you also have to make decisions. And can you also connect these decisions to your own code? I think Sven is the best person to answer this. Uh. <laughs> so there, are, uh, there are a couple of options. Um, if you want to, for example, in the process, um, want to make a decision like either, uh, we've, uh, it was maybe a little bit fast, but we have the, let me see, uh, the, uh, decision at the end, so inform the uh, crowd goes wild. Now it's uh, looking at like, okay, how many decibels do we register? And it either goes to the top or goes straight on based on the information in the process. So if you want to make that decision, you can just enter the data in the process and make that decision. Uh, you could also make decisions in your service tasks, for example. So if you need for, uh, more complicated decisions, you can do anything behind it, use if then else or what whatever you have. And also, um, but that's a little bit uh, bigger, you can use the decision modeling notation, which is like BPMN only for decisions. Uh, it's also supported by the, uh, the execution engine, so then you can also do it more graphically. My experience is to use it better, you do it in a service task, because then you can fetch all the data you need from backend systems because you don't want to overload your process with specific uh, process data from your business, because then it gets yeah. pretty bloated. I say just do it in your service task and uh, generate some output variable, which then the decision is based on. Yep. Does it answer your question? Yeah. Uh, and you can di do things differently, of course, in a BPM, and there are like uh, dozens of possibilities. A gazillion to ways to design, to, to your, do processes design your processes. Yeah. Yeah. Any, uh, <laughs> any other question from the audience? Yes, you, sir. So the question is, uh, hey, thank you for the perfect presentation. <laughs> I have an answer, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what is the difficult part? Like, where, where, where do you envision problems? That's a good, that's a good question. No, nowhere, of course. Um, Use the mic. Use the mic. This one, uh, okay. Yeah, be closer. Closer, closer. But don't blow into it because then it's yeah. good. Okay. Um, where it gets complicated, well, things you need to manage is like, and th that's stuff we're uh, also thinking about, is this is the process, you have uh, like your application in the back end, uh, you have of course different components like the handler of the service task you need to deploy at once. Uh, that's currently one of the main challenges to keep that consistent, but we have some technical solutions for that as well with continuous delivery pipelines, uh, so that's our next challenge from that perspective to get that all consistent and in, in sync. Um, if you just use a process engine yeah, and focus on the processes solely, then that's the hard part, I believe, um, for yeah, this, this way of working. Um, like I said, it brings a lot of benefits, so uh, I like to focus on that yeah, because of the discussions you can have with the domain experts. But that, that's currently the hard part. We're solving that problem right now. We have ideas about, about that. So, uh, Does it answer your question? How do you, how do you debug this? <laughs> how do you debug this? Um, yeah, like uh, we briefly shown this operational view and you can have like um, all kinds of data from the process so you can follow the steps it takes but also like the data in the, uh, the process itself so the variables you're using, okay this one doesn't have variables because, because we didn't upload anything. So you, in your operate view you can also look into the process. Of course we're now deploying it basically to the demo production environment. You will also have like your staging environment where you deploy it, test it, and then you can promote it to the production environments, obviously. 
um, that's the way you should bring the software to production and, and debugging. Yeah, there's a lot of information in the system you can use, um, but it's not like the typical debugger you use in your IDE, uh, of course. Can we find out why we didn't count the raised hands? Aaron. Uh, <laughs> I have to look at the back of the room since uh, no, uh, <laughs> they were uh, stand by with a laptop over there. But um, uh, we can't find it out through the process. Actually, uh, we um, we well, it gave a valid return, which is zero. So if it would have uh, crashed or whatever, then it would have been like raised an incident, and we would have been able to to see that within the process. But this time it gave well. It actually worked, but it didn't give me give us the proper result we wanted, of course. Uh, and that's just an AI model running uh, in there. I myself am no expert on that, so I'm not going <laughs> to burn my uh, fingers uh, <laughs> to answer this properly. Um, so basically, what we can it's it's simply in our own code service. It's we have a service running, and so we could go in there uh, and maybe check if there are any logs in there s telling us something. So that's the pro code part of this. We can still access our own code and debug that part of the code just normally. Does it answer your question? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Spin up K9S and uh, let's dive into the pod. Do we have a question? One more question, or is it, uh, there's time for one more? One more. Oh, well, there's two more. <laughs> I think you were first. Uh, sorry. That's an, that's an excellent question. Uh, glad you asked it. <laughs> there are multiple strategies. Um, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Um, so the question is, if you create a new version of the process, you have, like, new data or new business rules or a new process, how do you handle the migrations of these processes and the whole, basically the system as a whole? Um, there are many patterns you can use here. So also, this is a discussion you need to have with uh, uh, the business. But... Um, let's say in this case uh, we have two versions of the process, then the old running process will stay in the old version. Um, and it will call the service task. And in the service tasks, you need to make the decision, uh, am I running in the old process and should I do old business logic or new business logic? So ne you need some sophistication in your service tasks because of the way de we designed this. Uh, And then there's the second pattern where you Think migrate. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, not really a, a habit of me to. Uh, so uh, this is one pattern, uh, keeping it running in the old process and then switch to uh, new processes in the new process. But if it takes like a long time, let's say months, and there's a bug in the process and you need to change the seventh step and all the thousands of processes in step five need to have like the new seventh step, right? That's, uh, that's the question. You can also migrate the, the states of the process. So if you have like this, that is new process, but you want all the uh, processes which are in upload photo um, are still waiting for the user task, they need this new uh, service level, level agreement, uh, the, the timer, then you can uh, migrate them to the new process. That's a more simple version. You have one process, one backend running, but of often it's not really what the business needs. So that, that's also a part of the discussion with your domain experts. Because you're seeing the difference in the versions, you can also make a decision how should we migrate this process in the future? And there are technical uh, tools for that in, uh, in the stack as well. Answers your question? Thank you for the questions. Well, good presentation. Uh, if anyone wants to know more, uh, there are uh, all, uh, all stacks people are walking around and you can ask them for more uh, information regarding process design and uh, coupling it to your business development. Um, thank you, Jelle and, and Sven, people. and the SETUS people as well, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we, we are going to measure how uh, satisfied the audience is, of course, uh, at the end of this uh, presentation. <laughs> but um, thank you, I have a little gift for you guys, Jelle and Sven, I hope you yep. like it, and you, get, you will get two, of course, uh, with the two talks going on. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think we are now uh, at the break, right? Uh, so, uh, thank you. <laughs>